Hey, and welcome to this demo of integrating EMC Extreme I.O. with VMware Horizon 701, VMware App Volumes 2.11, and Microsoft Office 2016 with Windows 10. So what we have here is a single X-Brick running a 2500 VDI VMs that have been provisioned with Horizon 701 Instant Clone technology, which is a new technology uh, to Horizon. It basically gives you all the advantages of in, uh, link clones, but without the usage of link clones by the fact that you can actually provision a VM very instantly using the VMware forking technology. I will then also attach applications that are not installed in the master VM. In our case, I'm going to attach a Windows Microsoft Office 2016 using another VMware technology called App Volumes which basically allows you to maintain the pristine stage, the clean stage of the master image and basically just attaching the right application to the right users. So here you can see the 2500 VDI VMs, but let's see how do they look on the x itself. So as you can see, I'm using very small capacity to start with because it's all basically being forked from the master VM apart from the attached app volumes that we're going to see in a second. So if I go to the configuration tab, I can see that I have 20 data store named AppStack, which are basically hosting the same clone of Office 2016 that I pre-packaged in advance. And I also see DS002 up to DS020, which are basically data store that are running the instant clone VMs. I can also hover to the new web UI technical review that we just added to Extreme IO and is freely available for all of our customers and basically see the same information using the new web UI. The web UI is using HTML5. As I said before, it's in a technical preview state, so it may change, but you can go ahead and basically let us know how, how does it work for you. So here we can see the performance. I can dig a deep dive to each one of the data store for deeper performance if I want to. And I can also go to the configuration in our case and see all the volumes that I provisioned before. But enough about the UI itself, let's go to the App Volumes uh, Manager. So that's the VMware App Volume Manager. This new version 2.11 is the first one that supports the following combination, Windows 10, Office, and Instant Clones. This version is also the version that can scale, which I need to, because in my case, I'm actually going to run a load of 2,500 VDI VMs. So let's see what application I've actually assigned and to which user. So as you can see, I've already prepackaged Office 2016, and if I click it, it will let me know what is actually being uh, packaged and from which master volume itself. If I go to locations, I can see all those data stored that I showed you before. So basically what will happen is that once I package it, I can contain and create a what's called storage group, which will then go up volume, then go and basically replicate the same VMDK file, which in our case, contain the Office 2016 VMDK file across all the different data stores that I designated in that storage group. So here, for example, you can see 002 data store with Office 2016, and if I go to another one, I will see the same Office. Basically, allow up volume to scale appropriately, and each data store with a prepackaged application can serve hundreds of different users. So let's go back to the UI of up volumes, and let's see which user has been assigned with Office 2016. So if I press the assignment, I can see there is a group called VDI Login VSI, which is a group that contains thousands of users. And every time I will log in with a user that is a member of that specific group, the, he or she will see that specific Office 2016. So let's see how it actually looks like. So here you can see a Windows 10 VM, which is a member of the instant clone pool that I created before. If I go to the VM setting, tab, I will see that I only has one hard drive. That's the hard drive that Windows 10 is running on. And if I will log in with the administrator user, I will see that I do not have Microsoft Office provision for me. So let's do it. Okay, there you go. Let's now go to start, setting, applications, as you can see, apart from some basic apps that are there, I do not see Microsoft Office installed. So what we're going to do now is actually log off from this specific VM and log in back with the login VSI user that is a member of the AppStack 
attached users entitlement the first thing we can note is if we now go back to the VM and edit setting we can see that a new drive has been added to that specific VM that is of course the drive that contained the attached Office 2016 VM and if I will now go back and go to the start menu and go to the application tab I can now see that Microsoft Office looks as if it's installed locally of course it isn't, it's just been attached to that specific VM using app volumes and I can go ahead and open pretty much every Microsoft Office application that is a part of the Office 2016 that I packaged for this specific user. So that's awesome and if we go back to the app volume interface we can actually see the usage of uh, Office 2016. If we go to the attachment view I can now see that uh, app volume actually tells me that this specific user which I actually logged in with is actually currently attached with that specific Office 2016. So that's great. Now let's run the load of 2500 VDI VMs with app volumes on a single Extreme IO X break. In order to test the load on 2500 VDI VMs running instant clones, what we're going to do is run Login VSI. Login VSI is the industry standard benchmarking utility for VDI environments. So as you can see, I've already launched a Login VSI console. I just check some of the matrix that we're going to use throughout the test. I'm going to run the knowledge workload CPU workload, which is basically a workload that is designated for two virtual CPU. It's becoming the standard workload as opposed to the medium workload that was uh, lighter on the storage and on the CPU. And we're going to launch 2500 VDI sessions in roughly 45-47 minutes, which is what Login VSI recommend you to do to simulate uh, the morning storm when the users are coming to work. So let's start the test. I'm going to give the test a name. Login VSI is now going to connect to its launchers, which in return will be the one that will actually run the load on the VMs. Okay, so the test is actually starting to run, and what we can do is go to the first VDI VM and see what Login VSI will actually do inside of this VM. And all the thousands of the other VMs. So let's open the console on that VM. So you see it's being logged in. Every VDI VM will log in with a different login VSI user. The, the agent will start running and basically login VSI simulate real user behavior. It's using Microsoft Office. In our case it's the Office 2016 that app volume attached. So let's check it again and we can see the app volume. Office 2016 attached VMDK, attached application. And again, what Login VSI will do is run Microsoft Office, uh, try to browse the internet, read files, try to print them, uh, use Java applets, and many, many, many other things that normal users do throughout the days. And by doing so, it will basically simulate real user behavior. So, you know, in our case, it's going to use Microsoft Outlook 2016 to send email, receive emails, and so on and so forth. And the same will happen in the other VMs as well. So if we open the console of another VDI VM, we will again see Login VSI logged in into it. And at least in this case, it's basically browsing the internet. Um, so again, that's the closest thing that we can do to simulate real user behavior. And if we go back to the storage array, we can see the load starting to increase, which is expected. We're launching 2,500 VDI VMs. We can also correlate the same view with a new technical web UI view. So here we can see the apps are starting to accumulate. You can see all sorts of statistics around the volume themselves in terms of performance. Let's go back to the Login VSI console. Here we can monitor how many VMs have already been launched. Let's go back to again one of the consoles. You can see it Login VSI again using Outlook to attach a file, it's using free mind map to map all sort of ideas that the user might have. What I'm going to do now is pause the recording and come back at the end of these 45 minutes to see what was the load on the storage array and what was the score that Login VSI gave us for this particular test. The 
this stage, we can see that all the 2500 VDI VMs have been logged in. And what we can do now is go to the storage and see what were the IOPS that were observed and the latency. So I can zoom in. See that roughly at the peak, we got around 38,000 IOPS. Of course, based on the different block sizes you would expect from VDI workloads. Many small block size, some very large, and so on and so forth. And we can also then do a deep dive to the latency by zooming in. And we can see that the latency throughout the test was roughly around 1 millisecond latency 1.2 at its peak, which is uh, very good considering the fact that we are using up volumes and up volumes does increase a little bit the latency itself since the application doesn't run natively. When we can call it the same information with the new web UI, so that's pretty much it. We can double click and zoom in, or you can zoom in through this uh, button itself to see how the apps latency bandwidth and so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do now is let Login VSI log off all the users, which we will do in a couple of seconds, and then we can benchmark and see what was the score that Login VSI gave us. Okay, so in order to see the score that Login VSI gave us, we need to use the Analyzer Utility, select the test that we just ran, and open it. It will go ahead and load the test from all the log files that it gathered throughout the test. There you go, you can now see the final score. We pass with flying numbers, as you would expect. And uh, basically, you could actually add more users than uh, the 2500 that we had. I basically ran out of compute in my cluster, but from a storage perspective, you can happily run even more users than just 2500. So, thank you very much for watching.